Nigeria is making a huge effort in accruing enough COVID-19 vaccine for its citizens. And the Minister of Health, Osage Hanire, said the country has secured an additional 41 million doses from three major sources, Pfizer, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson. The minister said the date for the delivery is not yet known, but the federal government is making efforts to get it in good time. The 41 million doses were secured as part of efforts by an African Union tax team to help countries on the continent gain equitable access to vaccines. Many African countries, including Nigeria, are yet to start vaccination programs, even as the number of coronavirus cases continues to rise across the continent. And joining us to talk about issues surrounding the arrival of the vaccine in Nigeria is a member committee of Experts Association of Hospital Administrative Pharmacists of Nigeria, Joshua Irmusele. Good to have you join us, Joshua Irmusele. Let me start by getting <coughs> your reaction to this statement coming from the Minister of um, Health, Osage Haniri, saying that the country has now secured an additional 41 million doses um, of, of, of vaccines. What do you make of that? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, um, I think this is a good development. Uh, um, if the target we have as at uh, today is to be able to administer these vaccines to um, 40 percent, 40 percent, which is about 80 million, this this goes halfway. So I think it's a good start for Nigeria. Does it really go halfway? Because um, you require two doses. So would 40 million not be for um, about 20 million people? Would that not mean that you would require as much as 160 million um, to vaccinate 80 million people in the country? Yes. What I said is that it is a good start because uh, for, the, for a you know, difficult thing to get the vaccines anyway uh, because countries that are manufacturing after these vaccines, we prioritize their their own citizens before other uh, countries, so that we are able to get for one million. It's a good start. It will at least start um, start the job uh, vaccination, but this is it's still it's still quite a distance from where we should be. To be frank. Like you rightly noted, um, we, we are looking to vaccinate, according to the federal government, we're looking to vaccinate about 40% of our population. And you already did the math, it's about 80 million people yeah. um, this year. How, how tenable is exactly. that when you look at the rush and, uh, for, for this vaccine and how even countries like the UK and some countries in the European Union do not have access to this vaccine at this time? I just want to say that uh, we are just hopeful. Uh, because we are more or less like at the receiving end since we have not really been able to contribute uh, directly. If, if we are making these vaccines ourselves, then we'll call the shots. At the moment, we are at the mercy of those who have done the work to produce uh, these vaccines. So right now, we just have to do our best to see what will fall to us, because that's where our position lies at the moment. Uh, so I want to ask, because you mentioned, um, we rightly noted that we're not making this vaccine ourselves. And that has always come yeah. up in conversation as to why we cannot make these vaccines ourselves. Um, what is missing? What are the limiting factors to, as to why Nigeria has not been able to develop a vaccine? What, should, what is missing? Uh, I, I would say right away that if it's about the technical expertise, we are not lacking in that. First of all, we need to have a paradigm shift where we begin to crave more for homegrown solutions to problems. Because we have capacity, we just need a more enabling environment to be able to bring out these potentials. We have capacity. I dare say that in the countries where these vaccines are being manufactured, we have Nigerians who are playing critical roles there. But the question is, why can't they do so in Nigeria? Because as, as we all know, we still have a, a long way to go as far as creating the necessary infrastructure and environment is concerned. So those are the, those are the critical issues we have. So, um, in the interim, for uh, this, before we, the arrival of, the, of these vaccines, um, we're seeing more deaths from the coronavirus now, sometimes as much as 15 deaths a day, sometimes eight, on the average eight, sometimes 12. What should we be doing now? We've, we've seen the regulation from the, the recent regulation from the presidency. What should we be doing now to minimize the, the, the spread and the rate of deaths? Yes, I, I think for, for the large part, Nigerians should be more involved with preventive medicine because we are waiting for, um, we, are, we are hoping for, for a resolution of this uh, corona, vax, uh, corona um, uh, pandemic. But in the interim, we must practice uh, safe hygiene. All the recommendations that have been listed are very valid and very important, like social distancing, limiting uh, physical interactions, physical touch, and then, of course, staying safe, staying healthy, so that our immune system can be in top form 
if we are paraventure we are exposed. So all those are, have been outlined. Nigerians need to comply. We need to comply with these directives so that we are generally safe in this period. Talking about complying with the directives, um, the, the presidency, um, the president just signed a regulation for a COVID-19 regulation. And it, a part of that regulation is that when you do not wear face mask in public, um, there is a fine attached to it and it's six month um, jail term. Where does the burden of responsibility lie in terms of enforcing this regulation? Well, I would say uh, the, that requirement sounds uh, difficult to conceptualize, how it will be implemented. Um, but be that as it may, I think that uh, that statement also mentioned where the body lies. It lies with, uh, for example, if you are to come to my facility, I'm supposed to provide uh, the necessary uh, sanitation equipment, the hand sanitizers approved by NAPDAC. I'm supposed to ensure that my facility can cater for the required distancing, social distancing that has been stipulated. So the body lies on, on, on the two parties. It lies on the facility, it lies on the individual himself or herself. Put on your nose mask and you should also have your hand sanitizer with you as you as you move around and be conscious of distancing between you and other people. There, there are places where, where if you don't wear a face mask, for example, uh, maybe a supermarket, where if you don't wear a face mask, you can't get in. And people who don't have face masks yeah. decide, decide that, look, they're going to patronize those who allow you get in um, without wearing face masks. And it leaves businesses wondering, well, you're coming to buy from me. Why would I just allow you get in so you can mm -hmm. buy and I make my money that I'm supposed to make? So that's what I'm asking about the burden of responsibility. If businesses are flouting yeah. this just to make sales, then who should enforce? Government certainly should enforce because they are the middle... Uh, but I, like I said earlier, I wonder how the government is going to enforce something like that because it's going to be quite dicey. It is going to cause a lot of issues. But then, individuals should put on their their, their face masks, pay attention to the, the regulations, and then they should know that if they violate these things, there could be implications. You know, there could be implications. They could get arrested. They could do you know. But people should generally comply. They should comply. Maybe this it, maybe these are uh, places where people visit, like you mentioned, the supermarkets. To make it easier for people to comply. Maybe they provide the, the, the nose mask in case someone, someone forgot his in his office or in his car. They can make those options available for people to get masks at the point of entry. So there are always ways to deal with issues like this when they arise. All right, so I just want to touch on, just before I let you go, I want to quickly touch on um, the vaccine one more time. And that I yeah. want to speak on the yeah. issue of storage. Um, at this moment, because again, some of the vaccines would need as much as uh, minus 70 degrees Celsius to store. At this moment, do we have the capacity for storage? My, I, I would want to say emphatically, we do not have. And that has been mentioned too by experts also, as myself. Some of the storage requirements are extreme. And we are in a tropical environment where, in fact, to achieve those things, and they, don't forget we have the constraints of uh, power, which we need to maintain temperatures as low as minus 70, minus 40. So I, I must be frank with you, I'm not optimistic. I don't think we have capacity to store vaccines as they are now, except for uh, if there are newer vaccines which, which have less stringent uh, storage requirements, then maybe we can look to those ones. All right, member, Committee of Experts, Association of Hospital Administrative Pharmacists of Nigeria, Joshua Rumusele, thanks for talking to us.